The next type of hand I want to discuss are the hands where you have a big little combination. You have one good card, maybe a big Broadway card, an ace, a king or a queen, but it's accompanied by a much weaker card, a two, a three or a four, maybe a five or a six. These are tricky hands to handle and we'll look at ways you can do that now. In this first example, we're playing in the small blind with the hand king two, one of these typical big little hands. The big blind hand is unknown. We open with a raise and the big blind calls and the flop comes down jack, six, three. The big blind checks. We bet, we don't have anything, but there's a good chance our opponent won't have anything and will fold. But unfortunately, the big blind raises. Our hand is now completely useless. We've only got a king over card. The two is a complete passenger. Even if we were to pair that two, it wouldn't help us if the big blind happened to have made a pair. There's nothing we can do, we have to fold. Now let's consider how this hand plays out if you've got the holding of nine eight instead of your king two. In the previous example, we saw that the king two was a pretty much useless hand in this situation, but now let's look at the nine eight. The hand plays out the same way. You open raise, the big blind calls, and the flop comes down jack six three. Again, this has missed you, but you bet anyway, and now you get raised. Here, you have a reasonable hand to call with. Although there's an overcard on board in the form of the jack, it's far from certain that your opponent has a jack and has made a pair of jacks. Your opponent may have a six, they may have a three, there are two clubs on board so they may be pushing a flush draw, or they may have a hand like five seven, or even four seven and be pushing some sort of draw. So you can certainly call here. Now there are a number of cards that can come on the turn that will give you a good hand. For a start, you can pair either your nine or your eight, and this will give you a reasonable hand, or if you happen to hit a 10 or a seven, you will have gained a straight draw and will have a lot of outs to beat your opponent. Now, we don't at the moment know what your opponent's hand is, but let's give them something quite reasonable. Let's give them the hand queen six. They've made middle pair with a good kicker. Now, if we revert to our previous holding of king two, Playing with king two against queen six on the flop of jack six three, we are in this position only 13% to win the hand. This is about one chance in eight. Our chances are not very good at all. However, if we change our hand back to nine eight, suddenly we've got, perhaps surprisingly, a 30% chance to win the hand from this situation. That's a huge increase and makes our hand much more playable. Finally, there is one further point here. If we get a decent card on the turn, such as a 10, which creates an open straight draw for us, and our opponent now bets, we have an opportunity to raise them and put a great deal of pressure on. We have picked up a straight draw. We have a total of 14 outs against our opponent. We have eight cards completing the straight draw, but we can also win if we pair the eight and the nine. Of course, our opponent doesn't know this, but the board is beginning to look quite scary for their pair of sixes as there is now a jack and a 10 as overcards on board. And if we've paired either of these, they're drawing pretty thin. Against certain types of opponent, this semi-bluff raise on the turn can be a good play, which can put enough pressure on to take down the pot at once. Continuing this theme, let's change our hand once more. Now, instead of having king two or nine eight, we're going to play the hand king three, which is still one of those big little hands as opposed to two middling cards. Our opponent, unbeknown to us, is playing queen six. The flop is the same. It comes down jack, six, three. Our opponent has middle pair and we have bottom pair. The same thing happens. Our opponent checks, we bet, and they raise us. Now, despite having a pair, we are actually only 24% to win from this situation. Now, you remember that previously, having 9-8, which was a non-pair hand, we were actually 30% to win from that position. So you can see that middling cards often play much better post-flop than these high-low combinations.